The year was 2009. We were all picking up the pieces after the economy had imploded. Barack Obama had just been inaugurated into his first term. The movie Avatar was dominating the box office. It was the year that saw the birth of the ambitious taxi startup called Uber. The tech scene was exploding, and the advent of technology-driven crowdsourcing and crowdfunding platforms was beginning to take place. This new transformation of digital technology and smartphones enabled masses of people for the first time ever to start connecting together people, places, and things. So a new question arose out of all this. Can this new technology actually solve problems by collaborating and coordinating people? Around this time, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, was doing extensive research into the different ways the internet and social networking could harness the collective abilities of large numbers of people to accomplish time-critical tasks with unprecedented speed, accuracy, and scale. So they came up with the idea to create a challenge, and this was called the DARPA Network Challenge. The challenge was simple. Place 10 red weather balloons at 10 fixed and readily visible locations in the continental United States, and whichever team is first to identify all 10 locations of all the weather balloons receives a cash prize of 40,000 US dollars. The challenge was announced only about one month before the balloons were deployed. It was not only a timed contest to find the balloons, but also a timed limited challenge to prepare for the contest. The team that would win this challenge would need to harness the ability of the internet to spread information about the balloons widely and quickly, and to incentivize individuals to act. Thanks for tuning into another Read Media video. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with future content. Now back to the video. In crowdsourcing, an interested party provides incentives for large groups of people to contribute to the completion of a task or set of tasks. The nature of the crowdsourcing incentives vary substantially, ranging from monetary rewards to entertainment to social recognition. So it is important to recognize that the success of search and social mobilization requires individuals to be motivated to actually conduct the search participate in the information diffusion, and so on. In other words, a key challenge is the incentive challenge. Recognizing the difficulty of time-critical social mobilization, DARPA was looking to improve crowdsourcing efficiencies in situations like search and rescue operations in the aftermath of natural disasters, hunting down wanted outlaws on the run, and reacting to health threats that need instant attention. On December 5th, 2009, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 8-foot diameter red balloons were deployed at anchored locations across the United States. DARPA was prepared to leave the submission process open for a week until the coordinates of all 10 red balloons were found. When they initiated the challenge, the Director of Geospatial Intelligence considered it an impossible problem to solve using standard means of intelligence gathering. Close to 100 teams competed and more than 350,000 people participated in various ways. Within 8 hours and 52 minutes of the commencement of the challenge, an MIT team found the correct latitude and longitude coordinates of all 10 red weather balloons, leaving everyone scratching their heads at the sheer speed to completion of the competition. So how did the MIT team succeed and blow away the competition? Four days before the challenge had kicked off, a group of MIT grad students exchanged emails about this new DARPA network challenge they had just discovered. One student asked the group, does anyone have a $40,000 idea? Another student emailed the group back saying, we conclude that although global social networks are searchable, actual success depends on the sensitivity on individual incentives. Initially, the MIT team decided to place a fixed incentive fee of $2,000 per correctly located balloon, $20,000 total for the finders, and then leave the rest for charity. And logically, most of the other teams in this challenge settled with the same idea. Spread as much word as possible through social networks and give a fixed incentive fee to the people that locate each balloon. What they then realized, unlike any other team, is that there are two big flaws with this method. One being, a direct reward might actually deter people from spreading the word about the MIT team, as any new person recruited would be extra competition for the reward. Second, it'll eliminate any people outside the US because there's no possibility of them finding any balloons. So they took it one step further. They needed to incentivize other people to tell their friends about this challenge. They keyed in on something called recursive incentives incentives. At its core, the recursive incentive mechanism uses a number sequence called geometric progression, where each term is derived by multiplying or dividing the preceding term by a fixed number called the common ratio. The MIT team used the prize money to set a fixed amount of rewards to the solver and a variable amount to the inviter based on their location to the path of the solver. For example, in a chain of three connections, the solver will receive half of the allotted prize money or a common ratio of two. The closest connection to the solver will receive a fourth, and the third in line will receive an eighth of the prize money. Hypothetically, this can go on until the recruiters in the chain are splitting pennies and will never go over budget. Thus, it is seen that the rewards went to everyone involved in the success chain, from inviters to the person who finally made the discovery, and everyone would think they would have fairly good odds of getting something. 
As a result, many people who were involved in finding a balloon got a portion of the prize. The MIT team allocated $4,000 for each balloon discovered. $2,000 went to the first person to send in the correct location of the balloon. $1,000 went to the person who invited the person to the scavenger hunt. $500 to the inviter of the inviter. $250 to the person who invited that person, and so on. With a great incentive system in place, they needed something to keep track of all this. So they created a website where anyone could come to the site and put in their email and a username. In turn, the website would generate the user a personal URL. They could then go out and spread the word about the challenge in whatever way they thought was best, and the next user referred to the site would repeat the process. The user had the ownership of the solution and would conduct the search for the MIT team. Behind the scenes, they had created a spontaneous network of people that were drawn together by trying to find these balloons. The MIT team ingeniously combined the incentive of personal gain with the power of social networks to connect people locating each balloon. Further, they demonstrated that people are self-interested individuals, but also embedded in social networks. The DARPA network challenge was the first of its kind to pose such a massive geographically task in such a small time scale. Most importantly, the challenge showed how effective social media can be in disseminating information with speed and mobilizing people to solve challenging national geolocation problems. On that day, December 5th, 2009, Onlookers saw the birth of a technology-induced crowdsourcing revolution.